we have given up on getting monetization on YouTube. All right, I just turned the whole monetization thing off, okay, because of stories like this. I don't, I'm not even trying anymore, okay? Um, and not only demonetization, is not, it's not that big of a deal because it's, it was already pennies anyway, right? So, but unfortunately, because the stories that we're going to be covering like this next story, the, the problem is more than demonetization. YouTube actively deprioritizes our videos, right? So active by YouTube and Facebook, right? That means like less recommendation, less suggestions. And that means that our, our channel, our YouTube channel is, has a very hard time growing, right? So because we're cover we don't want to avoid covering stories like this, we, we beg you to please share our channel, share our videos, um, because you know, all these social media platforms are against the stories that we're covering. Um, so that, you know, we, we're really grateful if you share our videos. Anyways, Ali, next story. Okay, uh, next news is out of Australian Philippines, really more towards out of Philippines, but an, uh, an ISIS fighter on our doorstep is ready to kill Australians. Um, this is just crazy. So 60 Minutes, which is a, a popular new show, uh, did an interview with an ISIS uh, fighter from the Philippines. Um, and this this ISIS fighter from the Philippines is saying that they're ready to kill non-believers, including Australians, because God told them to do it. Um, <laughs> he was asked by the reporter, would you be happy to kill people like me? Um, and he replied, we will kill the people who's going to kill us. We're just doing what God told us to do. During this interview, this guy, Saddam, uh, said that foreign extremists had trained him to fight non-believers. With Syria crumbling and difficult to reach, the new Islamic State battlegrounds just hours from Australia include Indonesia, Philippines, and New Guinea. So, uh, they go on in this interview. This guy goes on to say that people from a different country fly into the Philippines to train them. Uh, they give them guns, they give them money, and they give them salary uh, to, to protect the areas in the Philippines that are now under Islamic State. Um, Why is he saying all that? This is really like... Uh like, is he giving up all their strategy? Like, aren't these th stuff that ISIS want to keep as a secret? Like, I mean, I don't understand. Like, first of all, how did 60 Minutes find this guy? Why is why why is he not arrested? Like, in, <laughs> why isn't the Philippines government like Duterte? They they they're not shy about arresting people without due process and just you know how is this guy? How is 60 Minutes get access to this guy? And how come Australia's and Philippines intelligence doesn't know, like, aren't they call isn't 60 Minutes, like, supposed to report this guy? Did they meet this guy in person? They did, yes. So, wait, aren't they supposed to, instead of recording him, been calling the authorities? I don't understand how this works. If well, I Australia knows, Australia knows that um, IAS is planning to attack them there. Uh, so they've actually been training their soldiers to spot um, invasions coming in. But what this guy told 60 Minutes was that a lot of their people, a lot of Australians who have flown somewhere else to train with ISIS and fly back home are basically sitting cells uh, waiting, just sitting in wait for a command to kill people. How do we know if how how we do we know this guy is even a trusted source? Like I mean, I'm pretty he sure he don't. He's oh. got his face totally covered. If you um, they have a picture of it on here. Um, his face is fully covered. He seems to be giving away a lot of information, but uh, they so they took over the city of Marawi, um, and they want to they want to run it. Uh, under Wait, Islam I thought, law. I thought they, I thought Philippine government saved that city. They still, no? Looks like no. They killed over a thousand people there to take it over. Yeah, it was, it was under siege for a couple of months. Um, there, yeah. he's saying that it still is. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I don't know. Do, do a lot of people know that ISIS has moved to, uh, you know, a lot of other countries after their, you know, defeat, many, many defeats in Syria and Iraq? into other countries and one of their main hubs has become the Philippines for some reason 
I mean, Philippines had already had this uh, Southern Islamic separatist movement. So, you know, the way that ISIS works is kind of like McDonald's. It's not like you don't actually, it's kind of like franchising. You just have an Islamic jihadist group somewhere and they just re they, you just get the instructions on how to rebrand anything. It's kind of like the difference between starting your own restaurant or just franchising for like McDonald's or somebody like that, right? So McDonald's has a specific way that they need you to do things, right? And they send you manuals and instructions. And now instead of having your owners, it's still your building, still your people, like you, you, it's just still you and you know the people that you hire. But as long as you follow the standards of McDonald's, now it's just the McDonald's branch. So it works like that, you know? You could be your own jihadi group somewhere in Africa, somewhere in Somalia or somewhere in the Philippines, or you could just rebrand everything. Um, so this rebrand everything and be like, hey, uh, the uh, ISIS brand is working. So we might just like just c paint everything black and call ourselves ISIS now. But the, the thing is for you to be recognized by the central authorities of ISIS as ISIS, you just have to make sure you do things their way, right? But once now ISIS, so this is, ISIS has was three different things. ISIS was a, um, you know, a jihadi group, right? Um, you, it was a caliphate, which is now less of that. The, the, main, the main thing that it was, it was a caliphate, which is like, because they had land. Now, because they don't have much land anymore, that is being challenged. Now they're going back to like another terrorist group like Al-Qaeda. But while the war Khalifa, they managed to use their branding to be, do this all this franchising, which was the third thing that they were doing. And now that their uh, territory is shrinking, now they're all those times that these in these other locations they had their groups growing. Now they're fleeing to those places, right? Um, and sending all the people that they train. Like I don't, but they or there's already people in the Phil. It's not like all of the people, the jihadists in the Philippines, for example, are coming from Syria and Iraq. These were jihadists that were already there, and now you just need a few people from ISIS to come and train them and stuff and give them a lot more religious zeal and so I don't know if it makes them more effective or not but basically it's just rebranding people that were already there um, under a new influence which makes them I guess a lot more dangerous because imagine the jihadists that were in the Philippines before they just wanted independence they were just fighting with the government but now if you're under the target under the influence of ISIS now you're going to target Australia and now you might even go target Manila or Indonesia or you know some other places around that in area because now suicide bombing and terrorist attacks is part of your branding now so right. this is, yeah this is this is kind of scary uh, and i don't understand why 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 you know philippines government i mean i just recently i know duterte had a recent speech recently and he he admitted that this is a problem that they haven't fixed yet um but I don't know, maybe, I, I hope this news report gets Australia and Philippines working with each other. I don't know how, did, 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 the, did the 60 Minutes mention at all that, how they know that this is a trusted source? Did they mention that? How did they check? Because I'm pretty sure they must have done some background research or something. I'm sure they did, um, but no. They just say that this masked uh, IS fighter from the Philippines gave the answer to 60 Minutes, an exclusive interview when asked by Liam Bartlett. Um, because I'm just imagining some ISIS people in the Philippines watching this and be like, who's, they, they're looking at each other and be like, I don't, we don't know who this, who's this guy, do you guys know who this guy is? Uh, like, it might be like a, some small timer and I, it might just sell on 60 Minutes a lot because it just scares a whole bunch of Australians, right? So this guy might be not that, I don't know, is this guy like some guy with a lot of information or is he just a foot soldier with no influence or is it top guy with all the acts, you know, or because if he's not, then 60 Minutes might just run with it because they know like this is going to go scare a lot of Australians and it's going to be great TV. So who cares if he's right or not, let's just run with it, right? So I don't know if I could, if I could trust this guy, right? So yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um... Let me see what the top comment is. Eshter is saying so sad that people are still willing to kill for the prospect of some sort of paradise. But yeah, and it's also a mix of you know politics and religion here. The one thing that you can see this among 
you know, he's saying like, oh, um, when they say, would you kill me? Like, the reporter is Australian. Is that why she said, would you kill me? You know, I don't know. I don't, okay. I don't know if he was Australian. Okay, here she is. Um, so when he said we will kill whoever is killing us, see how they just group all the people in one nation as the people that are killing us, right? The uh, people on both sides do this, right? So he's like, oh yeah, Australians, they had some, they, they, some Australians kill us. So now we're going to kill Australians. Well, really, did all of Australians, like, have, like you just put, grouped an entire nation of people and just decided to collectively blame all of them for something, right? And then right. and the, the revenge to that is also the same, right? So, for example, let's say this guy goes kill some Australians. I'm pretty sure some Australians are going to feel like, yeah, let's just you know bomb muslims i guess you know like blame all of them and just have revenge on any muslim for the actions of this guy right so I, I, this is such a weird thing that is hardwired in our brain and i don't know i don't think there's any solution for it because it's so such a you know this tribalism this tribal mentality i mean i don't i don't understand how people think like this because you know, I guess maybe when you when you're cheering for your team during sports, maybe you could get it a little bit, but I really don't know what the solution to it is because I just don't get it. You know, I know people just point out, oh, it's not, it's not logical, it's not logical. Yeah, but it's not logical. But it's something so hardwired in our brain. Of course, it's emotional. Well, how could you fight an emotion so strong, right? This tribal mentality. Um, there was another fighter that they interviewed as well, um, who said that two thousand men are prepared to fight for ISIS and Morali. Right. Um, another godless atheist is saying sixty minutes always report things that are shocking. They are uh, known for only half truths. Okay, so people take this for with a grain of salt, then, because yeah, I mean, this guy could be just a random person um, that that doesn't have much influence on ISIS. I'm not saying they're not a threat, okay? But I'm just saying you have to check your sources. I mean, and you can't, I mean, if they haven't, and it seems like you can't trust 60 Minutes 100% that they, that you like, yeah, this guy's a mask. He's saying like, oh, we're going to kill Australians. Does that mean that actually ISIS in Philippines is actively now planning an attack in Australia? We can't know that, like, just based on this. I mean. Nothing on here actually says that, by the way. I just want to make that clear. It's, uh... Whenever I was reading this, it all just seemed kind of like they found some people and they're trying to hype them up and they're asking them questions like, would you kill Australians? And they're like, yeah, if God told us to. And they're like, well, well, would you do this? Like, it's all leading questions to get them to say crazy things. So you saw my, my video. I went to Australia. I, ref I went to the Islamic um, section of, in Sydney and I did a video talking to Muslims there. Um, talking about whether Islam could be criticized or not. And that video went viral, right? That video went extremely viral. It got a lot of news coverage as well. Uh, my interview with Muslims there. But if you notice that I got, I wasn't, I got a pretty decent, diverse set of opinions from Muslims in Sydney, right? It, that In that Islamic part. The part that went viral was the part that one Muslim said, like, the choice is Islam or death, right? Right. Um, but and but that that but my video had a whole bunch of other people in the, Muslims in there as well. Like there were some Muslims. I'm not saying that's not worrying. I'm not saying I'm not trying to excuse this, ex, and I'm not trying to make excuses for Islam. Islam does cause ideas like that, right? Islam ca does cause killing, war, terrorism, right? But in my video, I show Muslims that also uh, fed us for free. I show Muslims that show the Saran, as well I showed you Muslims that tell us that yeah, you should be able to attack Islam, criticize Islam, it's fine, it's freedom of opinion. Um, I criticize Christianity, so why shouldn't people be able to criticize Islam? So I had those as well, but but m the only part of the video that went viral was the part that this guy came and told me that the choice is either Islam or death. That was the only part that went viral. But I didn't sugarcoat it to any any side. Like I included the bad parts, but I also included the good parts as well. Right. Um, like I didn't, I wasn't biased on any side. I could have, if I, if my agenda was to go look like Muslims look good, I would have just kept the good parts. If I, my agenda was to just like, hey, look, Islam Muslims are all terrorists, I would have just kept that one guy. But I kept both. 
Uh, Shubham is saying security is better than risking a terrorist attack. This small unconfirmed threat is still enough to put a country in some state of shock. No, I don't agree with that because security could, um, you know, overreaction could actually cause more harm than good. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.